Hello, welcome to the Virtual Thoughts podcast, episode number 15 or so, and I'm here with Fred Coast, uh, the Senior Vice President of Marketing at High Trust. Welcome, Fred. Thanks, Edward. Good to be here. Now, this is a, um, a t- our typical Virtual Thoughts podcast, but we want to go over the survey that High Trust just put out. It was very interesting to read, so if you can give us some of the highlights, we can start there. Sure, sure. So, yeah, so we've been conducting a series of studies around software-defined data center and cloud adoption. And we've been talking to about 500 both C-level as well as administrative kind of folks. So we've had a good cut of data, not just biased toward one uh, one direction. And, you know, at a high level, it's interesting. We're finding that, you know, there's a lot of talk about software-defined data centers and cloud, but we're finding the organizations are they're ready for adoption. Uh, you know, two-thirds of the folks that we've talked to have said they're either going to go faster or do more adoption uh, in the coming year. And so, you know, th- there's clearly movement there. And then, you know, the other topic that comes up in these conversations is security. Because everyone thinks about, well, we're not moving or security is an issue. And, and there what we're finding is, it's interesting, security is becoming less of an obstacle. Uh, they're finding solutions and things that can address some of the concerns. But we found there's a, there's a big perception issue around security. And we can talk a more about that as we go on. But the perception of lack of security might actually be bigger than the security problem itself. And then kind of, I'd say the final finding is that the organizations are finding there's tremendous benefits uh, in some of these software-defined data center strategies that they're pursuing. You know, majority of uh, folks we talk to are really finding what they kind of call, you know, quantifiable and undeniable benefits. So you can't sit on the sidelines too much longer. So, um, so I think it bodes well for, you know, organizations and all of those in the IT industry and trying to help, you know, with all these agility, cost cutting, making, you know, IT work much better kind of goals. So let's talk about the perception problem, because I believe there is one, but I also think that perception is because the gap, there's a gap in knowledge. The perception that most businesses have are that the clouds have no security, but that's really a gap in knowledge because the clouds probably have more security than they do. It's just not exposed or talked about or the tools aren't known on how to use it or integrate it into their system. And that, to me, is a gap between the virtualization folks who are looking to move to to be more agile, move to the cloud, the security folks who may not have the base knowledge, and the business folks that are just kind of reading what's in the Wall Street Journal saying that's the way we need to go. There's a huge number of gaps. Is it more gap or something else? Um, I, I agree with you. I think there's gaps. I mean, we talked about the perceptions, and we, you know, in the survey, um, we ask, you know, do you, are there solutions and technology to help you? And a majority said yes, but then, uh, you know, almost 50% said yes, there's perceptions or perception of security is holding us back. And so I, I think there's a gap there, but I think you touched on another interesting, you know, sort of finding we found is we ask about security in different ways. And one of the questions we asked was, you know, well, what's holding you back? And it was the perception, perception that I don't have adequate levels of security that I had for my physical infrastructure in my virtual infrastructure. And I think that that's an interesting, you know, answer in that, okay, there's a perception that I don't have adequate. But if you say, well, what isn't there? What is inadequate? I think it starts to highlight some of the gaps and that, you know, as you think about security in a software-defined data center moving the cloud, it's very different than your traditional, you know, server stack and things you did in your data center. So I think, you know, in some organizations, that thought process isn't as advanced. They haven't matured in thinking about, you know, some of these new technologies and, and what kind of security options are there. Because I, I agree with you, often uh, some of these, you know, newer cloud deployments or even software-defined technologies have security much more baked in or at least the opportunity to do that. So you may actually have better security than you've had in the past. And so I think there's a there is a knowledge gap there, and part of that knowledge may be just lack of knowledge of you know, what exists. The other thing that we see a bit is just the difference in the security part of an organization and the infrastructure part of an organization. I think many organizations' infrastructure team is, is really maybe has less of a knowledge gap because they understand some of the new things they're deploying and their strategies, and maybe the security team is... Um, I won't say being dragged on kicking and screaming, but they're having to play catch up and understand how the world has changed. Years ago, um, 
uh, Mike Foley and I, another person that joins me on podcasts and is well known in the industry, had like wonderful conversations about how security was finally, you know, integrating into virtualization and the infrastructure teams, and then it stopped. And that was when the first set of really big breaches started coming out. Now the security teams are really just tied to compliance. And they don't know how to measure in the virtual environment because they just haven't kept up with the knowledge on doing so. Now, in highly regulated industries like banks and so forth, they have no problems with virtualization. They have no problems with a software-defined data center. Their security teams have kept up. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm yeah. finding. But when you look at the typical enterprise where it's move faster or get lost, you know, the security teams are more tied to compliance than they are to anything else. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw when we, you know, sort of looked at what security issues might hold back your your cloud virtualization efforts around a software-defined data center, uh, compliance was a, a long pole in the tent, you might say. It was one of the, the top issues that popped up as dealing with that was going to be difficult or might slow down some of their adoption uh, into these kind of environments. And so, I think you're right. Some of the, the very progressive organizations, IT organizations, they, they've got a good handle on it. They understand it. Uh, but that gap widens as you look at, you know, maybe not some of the uh, people also look at leaders and laggards. If you sort of get out of that leader category of IT professionals, I think you, you highlight a, a problem that exists. When highly regulated organizations have to be on top of things. Yeah. There are no, yeah. no many that aren't <laughs> from a security perspective. <laughs> sure. They're trying on um, some of the newest tools as well because that's how you can keep track of everything, how you can detect everything. Yeah. Yeah, and that, um, you know, actually, you bring an interesting point that, um, you know, I talked earlier, we, you know, we talked to the, the C-suite sort of executives, and we also talked to the, the admin types. And, you know, it's interesting to compare and contrast those two because if you, um, for instance, you ask them about what's keeping them from virtualizing, you know, more of their organization or really tackling more of their server virtualization. Um, you know, the IT administrators say, well, security is kind of the issue, um, almost, you know, say 60%. But when you look at the sort of senior exec in the business part of the, the company, only about 36% said, uh, you know, security was a concern. But if you flip that around and you ask what's, you know, what's keeping them from virtualizing more, of their IT infrastructure uh, budget, C levels say budget. Uh, you know, tech tech leaders say only eight percent. So you, you have a you know again a big difference of sort of security and what's holding these back budget. So you've got you know these two very competing forces I think at work here. With you know we want to go fast and, and virtualize and, and move to all these new technologies, but we also want to be secure. And um, the two parts of the organization you know, we found are you know, sometimes very differing data points or perceptions. No, it, I see that as well. Um, that's actually very interesting that they, they looked at, but it's always been that way. In yeah, my true. Now, but I think that's how, you know, organizations, if you think about it, you know, within an organization, how you, you know, sell or move these kind of projects through, you know, the, the technical leaders have got to work with the business leaders because there's very sort of different potential motivations or obstacles that we found in the survey. And I think the more, back to your point, I think maybe the more advanced organizations have that, those two organizations working better together uh, to move forward more quickly. Well, and then also begs the question: Is did you ask whether how much how, how much their infrastructure was already virtualized? Because I I know from getting to seventy percent, seventy eighty percent of of an environment is incredibly easy. Going mm -hmm. past that to eighty to ninety to one hundred percent is almost impossible. Yeah, and that's that's you know we we find that and, and some of that came up in the survey as well is there's some I won't call it low hanging fruit but as you it's sort of a, you know, a curve up into the right to, to continue to virtualize more and more infrastructure it gets harder and harder you have critical resources you've got Active Directory servers or you've got something where the security concern is so high or you've not been able to virtualize it because of uh, uh, you know, privacy concerns or something. Um, it does get harder and harder, but we're finding that, more organizations that's are an, starting that's, to be able to That's a misinformation. There's no need. I mean, when people say Active Directory and they say privacy concerns, it's like, no, that's misinformation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a, I run a 100% virtual environment here. And it, getting to 100% is not easy. I'll guarantee yeah. you that. But there's absolutely no reason. There's no workload as of today that I have found that cannot be virtualized. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think it goes back to something you said earlier, that, you know, those knowledge gaps or some of the perception of, oh, my, that's our crown jewels. That's, there's some reason we can't do that. Um, you know, if you, if you peel that back enough layers, you can do it. Well, and I actually find in virtual environments, I actually have access to even more and better security tools that can get to levels that, uh, levels of the data that physical ones just can't get to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can yep. do things under the covers that benefit everything in my environment that on a physical environment, I would actually have to have a huge number of agents. I can do things in the networking, for example, that I can't do in the physical network without actually laying a whole bunch of new wires. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, as you virtualize more of those, you know, part of this the survey was getting at, you know, the software-defined data center and what we, you know, it's not just compute. We've been virtualizing that for quite a long time, but now we got to think about storage network. How do I continue to virtualize the whole stack? And, you know, you know we found that, um, you know, rough you know, more than half expected much more rapid deployment of, you know, virtualization of the network uh, in this coming year. And I think part of what you were getting at, when you do that, um, you have all kind of opportunities to really have, I almost would argue, tighter security and in tying into micro-segmentation and having much tighter controls than in sort of the, you know, looking through the rearview mirror the way we used to do things. So I, I would agree with you. The platform allows you to, to build a lot more security in or have greater controls. And that's what I'm saying. And while it's hard to get there, um, it's now going to be easier. So the survey actually shows an interesting skills gap as well as a knowledge gap, I would say. And that, to me, makes it's kind of what we've been seeing, but now how do we solve it? How do we get rid of that gap? Noting that's there is one thing. Getting mm -hmm. rid of it is a totally different subject. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I, I think it falls upon, you know, a, a lot of people. I'm, I'm on the vendor side, so we need to do our part. But even organizations like, you know, ISOC and some of the industry associations have a big role to play. I was just speaking with someone lately, recently, who was at a ISOCA conference and speaking and, you know, and highlighted just in, like, in the auditor community, they're, they're, they're just now starting to, many of them figure out virtualization, cloud. How is that different than the, the worlds I used to operate in? So I I think a lot of different organizations, you know, actual enterprises need to do some of that to you know, train their security staff and such. I think we have a long way to go on um, education uh, to get everybody there. Um, I think sometimes it's interesting in audiences, you, if you say cloud and they all think of something and then you start to ask a few questions, you find tremendous misperceptions or confusion around private cloud, public cloud, what all this means, even amongst people who you would think in a IT technical community have a full understanding. So, well, and everybody uh, has their own definition. I mean, I have mine, which is basically I don't believe in public or private. I only believe in hybrid. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is the only truly private cloud I've ever seen is sitting inside of a Fermi cage. <laughs> that's true. That's a very extreme case. That's uh, But that's a private cloud. Nobody can yeah. get in without a key. It kind of fits like that. The only secure server I've ever seen is one's unplugged from the, the network and, you know, unplug, unplug, dis, discombobulated in ground <laughs> and buried sure. in a lead casket. Yeah. Somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, no. Well, I think almost because of some of this perception or maybe being overly concerned about security in some of these environments, it's probably driving some organizations to actually build in and pursue better security because they're, they're thinking, you know, the perception is inherently insecure and a huge risk, and so they're probably putting more thought in security than maybe they did before when they thought, oh, this is, you know, my infrastructure here, and it's in my building, and, you know, and it's in behind, my cage, if I will. And it's behind my firewall, which I trust 100%. Exactly. Was, but we're also finding now you can't trust your firewalls, you can't trust your web access firewalls, you can't trust these things because people know how to bypass them. Yeah. And if you don't keep them updated and you still have a million rules, you have the, the same problem where... If I do network function virtualization, I can target the 10 rules I need for just that one little area instead of yeah. carry on this, all this extremely old weight that I don't need anymore. It's baggage. Mm -hmm. And this, makes, this will make the um, security market, it should help the security market quite a bit, and it should help with the education process as well. Yeah. yeah, the other thing that, you know, we're seeing, and the survey touched on this a little bit, was just, you know, 
the encryption, which is sort of like thought of like old world technology. We've been doing that for years, but it's coming back. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's coming back. It's the, it's the new new. Um, but if you think about, you know, you're, what you just said, you know, sort of everything's a hybrid cloud stuff here. You know, nothing's completely private and public is included. Assuming it's almost like, uh, you know, one of the, the analysts talks about the, the zero trust and different things, but you almost got to assume your data is going to be everywhere. So this idea of making sure it's encrypted and you can manage that, you know, sort of data accessibility, if you will, is coming hugely important and, uh, uh, sort of like you know old old school old world technology really coming back in vogue, and so I think that's a, a thing we're seeing where where people are really starting to, to understand why they need to do that, and and it's not just I think the thing that's encryption isn't just the algorithm that changes the bits and sort of obfuscates the data. It's the you know how do I manage that? I mean, you talked about having different different clouds, different providers, but how do I manage the keys and all that? And so I think we're moving an environment where that's going to be hugely important for organizations. Well, as we proliferate our data, we have to manage all that, and as we use more and more clouds, management becomes much more difficult. If we weren't able to manage in our own in our own small little environments behind our own walls, moving it to the cloud doesn't make it easier. Mm -hmm. However, what it does do is allow you to use tools that already exist in the cloud because if other people have the same problem, like, for example, high security modules or HSMs and so forth that are existing in the clouds, now you can tie into them or at least store your keys so you can use them to encrypt and decrypt. You may even find that the clouds have even use of the new hardware like SGX and so forth, which will actually mm -hmm. help out with you know, encryption and so forth. And those won't be out to sky like makes it into servers. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is Intel chipset stuff that's been that's been released, but it's inavailable not it's not available in servers today. Yeah. And that's it's gonna make it makes a difference in on how we do everything. But people are I think people are going ahead and doing it regardless. So they don't need the hardware to do it. They're using the software, mm -hmm. yours and others. And they're learning about key management and where to store everything. And that I think that's a good thing. And then but I still see a gap to all those people that aren't moving in that direction and that will suddenly be faced with this huge need to move in that direction. Yeah, I guess there's, you know, carrots and sticks and all kinds of incentives. I think you know, every time we hear about another breach and then someone realizes, wow, if I you know had different way of implementing encryption or something that may not have happened, that uh, maybe that's the stick, but I think that the carrot is we're looking at organizations that are, you know, doing best practices, what are they doing, how they're protecting data, how they're doing key management. Um, it's more the incentive to get people thinking that way. And even the cloud providers are moving very quickly to have, you know, all kinds of encryption services and even some of the key management built in or you can bring your own. So, um, so we've got both the carrot and the stick kind of moving organizations along, I would argue. And I would say the cloud providers are thinking far ahead of the typical enterprise. The services exist today that they will use tomorrow. Yeah, true. I would agree. Well, any other last thoughts on, on the survey? When will be the well, next one coming out? And where can so they we, find it? Uh, yeah, so actually, if you want to, if you go to uh, hightrust.com, uh, you can search on SDDC uh, study and you'll quickly get the landing page. We've got all the data. And, you, know, you can drill down a lot more than what you and I have talked about today. Um, at hytrust.com. Um, you know, I think the good news is it's, you know, adoption's increasing. Uh, the risk and the concerns are decreasing. You know, the benefits are there. Um, it, it's just we're on kind of a, a maturity cycle that's moving nicely. Um, and, and, and at least the, uh, the objections or things that we saw aren't going to out, outweigh the, the benefits that organizations are getting. So uh, as, as you said several times, we just got to close that gap and help continue to change the perception. Well, again, everybody, hightrust.com, search for SDDC study. And thank you very much, Fred. Okay, thanks, Edward.